Welcome to Mimaki's Wrestling Pro 6 tutorial series. In this short video, I will review how to use a jig function in Rasterlink for our flatbed printers. For this example, I will be creating a jig for pens. The jig button has an image of a printer with image blocks in two columns and three rows. To begin, select the image you would like to print. Then select the profile you would like to use. At this time, there is no need to resize. You will have an opportunity to do that later. If you'd like to add a white layer or a gloss or matte clear layer, make that selection now with the special plate function. Now select the jig function icon. Then select the jig print button. You will notice the composition and the layering buttons have grayed out. If you need to make any changes, you may unselect the Jig Print button at any time. To create a jig, you first have to name it. You will notice that there are already sample jigs, but we will create our own. Select the green plus sign to confirm, and you will notice that the Jig Definition tab comes up automatically. This jig was designed for this table. Therefore, the default table size already matches the jig size. If your jig sits outside of the origin area, you can adjust for the position here. I will leave it at 0, 0 because this jig sits at the origin. If the jig were to sit at an angle, you can adjust for that here. Now we will work with the individual print pieces. These pens are 5.5 by 0.625 inches. Now we will count the individual prints. This jig has two columns by 16 rows. Here, we'll measure the interval pitch. This is the space between prints. Measuring from equivalent edges, these pens sit at 5.875 from each other in the width or the scan direction, and one inch in the feed direction. Now we will measure the position of the first part. From the edge, this pen sits at 0.275 and 0.1875. The layout marker defines where your image will be aligned within each individual image box. Here it uses the bottom right corner as a default. You can center it or center it to an edge. And finally, in this adjustment area, you can edit individual copies to, of the image to reflect non-conforming parts. For example, you can select the number 10 spot here. You can adjust the distance by any amount, or you can ask the rip to skip it altogether. Once you are satisfied with the layout of the digital print, Select the Read Only button before going back to the image layout. So there you have it. You have created a digital jig that can be used for any additional images. As you may have noticed, the image is not exactly where it should print on the pens. The basic setup is great for images that sit aligned to the edge or center. To adjust for off-edge or off-center images, you have two options. First option, you can edit the original file to have the artboard reflect the size of the full pen with the image in the proper location.
I will show you how to do it within the jig function. Here, it is as easy as editing the image size to the size of the actual print area. You also have to adjust the first image location. I will keep the center right selection to make sure it is centered and to the right of the print area. Now I can go back to the Jig Layout tool and resize the image to the proper size and it will be in the proper print position. There you have it. Now the image is in the proper place for printing. Now that you have the Jig set up, you can use it to create jobs with more than one image. To do this, select the jobs you want to print together while holding the Shift key. Then select the Arrange function. With both jobs still highlighted, select Arrange. As you can see, they are now linked in a, with a line on the left column. In the Jig menu, select Jig Print. and then scroll down to find the pen jig we just created. As you can see, the images are centered and to the right where we left the original jig. To change this, go into the Jig Definition tab, unselect Read Only, and then scroll down to the Layout Options. Select the left center square. Now go back to the image and see that it has been relocated to the left. To resize the images, select the icon on the far left column. And then select Valid and resize as you need. Here, you can also create more than one copy. Here are a few final steps before printing. If you do not have a jig for your substrate, I will show you how to print a jig guide for your parts. Please note, this is recommended only for thin substrates such as coasters or larger flat pieces. For thicker media like pens, we recommend a jig with a surface that is slightly under or at the same height as a print surface. To do this, select the jig you want and then select the print the jig outline button, which is this button here that looks like a green page with artboards. The jig outline menu pops up. We will cover the conditions favorites in, other, in another video. On the right, you can select how the jig outline will print. You can control things like thickness and the line offset so that you can see the line outside of your print substrates. You also have the option of the half the line width. This allows you to print directly onto the measured line. Color options are also available. Once you have your major selections, you can save the file for future prints or to import into design programs like Illustrator. You can also print a digital jig directly from here. 
I am not currently connected to the printer, but I will show you how it will show up in the job queue. You can see that there's a new file named after the jig. It contains the same layout as the jig setup, including the number 10 spot offset. Here it is not crossed out, but the jig will not print the image as we selected. Now you can print the jig image on a flat surface and you will have a precise guide for your image locations. With your jig set or printed and the files laid out, you are now ready to print. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. Please feel free to provide any feedback and be sure to watch our other tutorials.